Hi, today is our final session and we'll be taking a look at newborn health and well-being. I appreciate this is a massive topic, so we're just going to discuss keeping your baby clean, some common health concerns and newborn sleep. Let's start by taking a quick look at how to keep your newborn clean. The first thing to mention is that the NICE guidelines recommend that no products are used on a baby's skin for at least six weeks as their skin is so fragile. Simply use water and cotton wool or reusable cloth wipes as an environmentally friendly alternative. You can bath a baby from day one if you feel comfortable doing so. However, babies don't need baths in the early days. You can simply top and tail them instead. This means cleaning their face and neck and cleaning their bottoms. Always wash your ha own hands and make sure that you have everything you need ready to go before you start to clean your baby. This should be a bowl of warm water, cotton wool or reusable wipes, a fresh nappy, clean clothes and a towel. When cleaning particularly sensitive parts like their eyes, use one piece of wet cotton wool wiping from the inside of their eye to the outside and then discarding it. Getting a new piece of cotton wool if their eye is particularly gunky and again wiping from the inside of their eye to the outside and then discarding it. You do exactly the same thing with the other eye, discarding each piece of cotton wool after use to prevent infections and then drying their eyes with a flannel or a towel. You need to do a similar thing when cleaning baby girl's bottoms. Wiping from front to back and discarding the cotton wool after each wipe as this will prevent urinary tract infections. Babies' necks can get particularly dirty, especially if they dribble when feeding, so you'll need to give them a good clean between the folds and dry them thoroughly afterwards to avoid these areas getting sore. The same is true when you're cleaning a baby's bottom. Even if they've just done a wee, get into all of the folds, cleaning then drying them thoroughly to avoid nappy rash or sores developing. One thing to remember, babies do tend to wee as soon as you open a nappy, so double bluff them by opening it and shutting it straight back down to catch that wee, especially if you have a little boy, as it's likely to hit you straight in the eye. Another tip for little boys is to make sure that their willies are facing down into their nappies each time you change them. This avoids the wee coming straight up and out over their nappy and all over their clothes. And when you do start to ba bath your baby, always start by cleaning their faces and washing their hair first. Keeping their nappy on, swaddle them in a towel and clean their hair over the sink or a bath. This helps um, avoid them getting too cold. Then dry their hair and pop them into a warm bath, gently cleaning them with a flannel or a soft sponge or simply splashing water over their bodies. Again, remember to have everything you need ready to go so that you're never tempted to leave a baby unattended, even for a moment. We're now going to discuss some newborn health issues that you should be aware of. Firstly, let's talk about nappy rash. This is something all babies can get, although it is less common in newborns. You can avoid your baby getting nappy rash by changing their nappy as soon as it gets dirty. Cleaning them with water, avoiding the use of soaps, bubble baths, lotions or talcum powder and drying their bottoms thoroughly. Giving them some nappy off time and using a barrier cream but only when they have nappy rash. It should clear up in a few days and if it doesn't speak to your health visitor or GP as it could be a sign of infection such as thrush and may need a cream to treat it. Jaundice is a really common and usually harmless in newborns. It causes their skin and the whites of their eyes to look a little yellow. They also may have dark yellow urine, whereas it should be colourless. If you think your baby has jaundice, speak with your midwife or health visitor, as they will want to check out whether your baby needs treatment or not. And the last thing we're going to discuss is colic. Firstly, Crying is a normal thing for your baby to do. It's one of the only ways they can communicate with you in the early days, telling you that they're hungry, they need changing, they're bored or overstimulated, or simply that they want to cuddle. 
You'll quickly come to understand the different cries your baby has and learn to respond to them appropriately. Colic is different. Researchers don't know what causes colic in babies, but it is a genuine condition and a really tough one for new parents. Colic is when an otherwise healthy baby with no other needs cries persistently. It usually starts a few weeks after birth and continues until the baby is about three or four months old. It's defined by the rule of three. Crying for a solid period of more than three hours per day for more than three days per week for longer than three weeks. The best thing for your baby is for you to wear them in a sling so that they're close to you and keep moving with them. This may not stop them crying, but it will comfort them. Seek help from your family, friends and a GP if it gets tough and maybe invest in a really good pair of noise cancelling headphones as this could help keep you sane as you comfort your baby. No matter how frustrated you get, never shake your baby. Sleep is vital for your baby's healthy growth and development. Newborns will sleep for about 16 to 18 hours in a 24 hour period, but usually for no more than a couple of hours at a time, and not necessarily more at night, as their bodies don't recognize day from night in the early weeks. The key thing to remember is that every baby is different, so try not to compare your baby's sleep patterns to another's. It's likely to just stress you out rather than provide any solutions. Here are some tips to encourage good sleep habits in your baby that will help you too. Firstly, remember sleep breeds sleep. Overtired babies do not sleep well, so respect the need for naps and nap when your baby naps it will really help you when you're getting up through the night. Get out for a walk each morning. This helps set your reset your circadian rhythm and builds up your baby's melatonin levels, which are needed for a good night's sleep. And start to introduce a bedtime routine, usually from about six to 12 weeks, and be consistent with it so that your baby learns that they're off to bed and it's time to settle down. Having touched on some basic sleep tips, I also want to explore some safe sleep practices that will help mitigate the risk of sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. This refers to the sudden and unexplained death of an apparently healthy baby under 12 months old. Whilst rare, there are some things that you can do to reduce the risk to your baby. The safest place for your baby to sleep is in their own cot in the same room as you for at least six months, both during the daytime and night. There are lots of sleep products on the market, such as nests, pods, and hammocks. However, the safest option is for your baby to sleep on a firm, flat mattress in a cot free from toys and loose bedding. Overheating is a big SIDS risk, and with this in mind, your baby needs to sleep in a cool room between 16 to 20 degrees and dressed appropriately for the season. Never put them by a radiator or under a window. Babies often sleep better on their fronts, but this puts them at a much higher risk of SIDS. Babies should always be to put to sleep on their backs at the foot of their cots. And finally, never sleep with your baby on a sofa or an armchair. This can increase the risk of SIDS by 50 times. I want to finish this course on a positive note, and there is nothing more positive than a lovely bond with your new baby. Don't be surprised if it takes a little while to kick in. That's completely normal. Give yourself time. You're meeting each other for the very first time after all. My six top tips for bonding are skin to skin contact. This is a great way to calm your baby and boost your oxytocin levels both parents can get involved, your baby will love it. Chat to your baby. The more you talk to your baby, the faster their vocabulary grows. But they also know your voice from being in the womb, so it really brings them comfort. Play with your baby. Simple games like peekaboo are a great way to bond with your baby, giving them lots of eye contact 
and encouraging them to giggle. And that giggle will melt your heart. Read to your baby. In the early days, your baby can only see a short distance from your breast to your face and only in black and white. This is why strong, simple patterns and black and white books are so good for newborns. Feed your baby. This is a great way to bond and a perfect opportunity for you to give them your undivided attention. If you're bottle feeding, try to give the majority of the feeds yourself to protect this space. And finally, respond to their needs quickly. Whether that's their need to be fed, a nappy change or simply a cuddle, Research carried out by the World Health Organization shows that responsive parenting improves the cognitive and emotional development of babies and children. If you want any more information about the topics that we've discussed during this course, explore the Bounty app and visit newlifeclasses.com forward slash bounty. I wish you all the very best as you start your parenting journey.